If you thought assembling the radar was going to be easy, you would be wrong. I also experiment with the Edward decals that have the removable film. I ignore all the time I spent sanding and filling various gaps and discover my new favorite pair of scissors. Yes, I know this is exciting stuff, but welcome to my BF-110 Nachtjäger or Night Fighter build. To help spice up the cockpit, I'm dry brushing a gray color over most of the raised surfaces. I use gray instead of silver or white because those colors would be too extreme for this application, either too shiny or too bright. Here is an example of the floor of the cockpit before and after dry brushing. You can see what a difference it makes. Prior to the oil wash, I've sprayed a coat of aqua gloss varnish. If you skip that step, the wash will be absorbed by the porous paint and it will be difficult to remove the excess. I like to use oil washes over enamel because they are cheap to mix and easy to wipe away. Even if you wait a day or two, oil paint is really slow to dry. The levers that are being attached here were the most difficult part of the cockpit to assemble. Although the nose section will be closed in the end, the kit includes the full gun and ammo belt setup. Since it was early in the build and I no doubt would have accidentally broken the protruding gun barrels, I snipped them off and saved them till the end when they could be reattached. I had some serious gaps when I attached both engine nacelles to the wings. I didn't show the filling, sanding, and rescribing I did to correct the problem, mainly because it's kind of boring to watch, but I was surprised to encounter this issue on this particular kit. I used PVA glue to attach the radio gear to the clear canopy. I'll clear the excess glue away with a wet brush, and it won't fog up the clear parts. I played around with my new stencil to help model the aircraft with some pre-shading. The panel lines were also pre-shaded with a dark gray. In the end, I probably went a little heavy on the top coat and a lot of that modeling was lost. Figuring out the correct settings to spray the small modeling on German planes is always a guessing game. You can adjust your air pressure, thinner ratio, needle size, spray distance, and also the type of paint you use can also be a factor. It's best to practice off to the side and get a feel for what works best with the equipment that you have. Not every model that I'm spraying here turns out looking good and sometimes I have to cover it with the base color and try again. The BF-110 has distinct exhaust stains running down each wing, except for the one exhaust on this model that actually runs on the underside. The reddish color is hull red. I sprayed a thin, thin layer of that. 
I then covered it up with many more thin layers of NATO black and even a little bit of uh, gray mixed in there too. I tried using tacky putty for the leading edge coloration, but in the end the lines were too sharp and I didn't like how it looked, so I freehanded it. Again, some of this modeling was overdone, so I sprayed over some of it with the base color to correct it. I just experimented with the propellers, with using multiple layers of differing finishes, a little bit of dry brushing, so abrasions, chipping fluid, covering up the excessive amount of abrasions, and then chipping some of the black layer to reveal a fraction of what I had dry brushed. I added scratches with a pin vise and then splattered oil wash over the whole thing. The oil wash came out much less pronounced after I let it dry. This is an easy piece to experiment on because if you feel like your weathering is overdone, you can always blend it down with the base color, which in this case was black green. Much has been said about Edward's latest decals with the removable film. As you can see, they look terrible with the film still attached. There seem to be air bubbles trapped under it, so in my opinion, removing that film is a requirement. The decal is quite sturdy, and it can be washed with water after the film is removed. I encountered minor chipping on one decal where I didn't let it dry long enough before I peeled up the film. I cleaned the edges up with some precisely aimed paint, and it came out looking fine in the end. The small decals, or the stencils as they are referred to, have the same film, but it was extremely hard to remove it from an item that's only one or two millimeters in size. In most cases, I left the film on the stencils, and because they are so small, they don't suffer from the same coloration issues that the larger decals had. For some reason, I've always liked the German drop tanks and their Keine Bombe marking, which means not a bomb, and it also makes me assume that someone must have made a mistake for them to feel the need to mark it like that. Just like the cockpit, the plane was coated with aqua gloss before the wash was applied. Frankly, I slathered on way too much of the wash on the wings because it took me forever to wipe it away. I used so many paper towels and had oil paint all over my hands and workbench by the time I was finished. The wheels in this kit come as precise circles, but I've sanded off the bottoms to show the weight of the aircraft. When you do this, it's important to flip the plane over on a flat surface to make sure the flat section is properly aligned with the ground. This is easier said than done considering the glue is still drying and the wheels are wobbling in place as you rotate them to the correct angle. This plane was also my first foray into watercolor pencils. The set I purchased for AK worked very well, and I focused on the ring root and cockpit entry points to add some extra wear. You want to use a fine tipped pencil, and it was at this time I realized that I don't own a pencil sharpener. The pencils were decently sharp straight out of the box, but I'll need to acquire a sharpener to use them on future builds. Thousands of dollars of models and supplies and I still don't have a 25 cent pencil sharpener. Since these are watercolor, you can basically erase what you don't like or have overdone with, you guessed it, water. You can also use the water to help dilute areas for highlighting or shading or to make streaks. My final coat of matte varnish, which is also water-based, 
did dull the worn effects I'm adding here, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. I was able to rebuild them with the new layer of pencil markings and repeat the process until I had the result I wanted. Remember those gun barrels I cut off earlier and promised to replace? As I pushed the first one into position, it went too far and fell into the nose cavity, had a bit of glue stuck on it, and now it is permanently entombed. That turned into a $15 mistake, since I had to buy a replacement set from Quick Boost, and I paid a lot closer attention on my second attempt. I have never been so excited about a pair of scissors in my life, but these Tamiya decal scissors have the finest tip out of any ones that I've tried. That's important for cutting the rigging or antenna cable as close to the connection point as possible so there isn't any overhang. I saved the radar for last because it looked difficult, fragile, and likely guaranteed to break off. There are four pieces of photo etch that must be bent from a two-dimensional to a three-dimensional shape, and then placed in perfect symmetry with each other onto a plastic piece, where you also need to cut the tip off each post and then reattach over the photo etch. Have fun with that. It took quite a while, but I think I got it pretty close in the end. It's the near-perfect symmetry of all these various thin parts that make it really difficult to get this thing right. And that's it for my BF110 build. Enjoy the pictures, hope you like the video, and I'll see you on the next one.